Hey guys, Dan Lepopka here. And this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play this killer metal riff. By which I mean playing melodically with the whole tone scale. So for those of you who don't know what the whole tone scale is, it's where we start from whatever note, and we move up in whole steps until we reach the octave. So for example, if we were to start from C, we'd move up in whole steps, so C to D, to E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and finally ending back at C. And that sounds like this. It's a bit of a strange sound, and that's mainly because the scale is symmetrical. That is, each note is evenly spaced from the last one. So it kind of has this odd floating quality to it. It's quite different from the C major scale, where every note seems to want to push towards C, the tonic. Especially that B at the very end that so badly wants to resolve to C. Because the whole tone scale doesn't really have a pull towards any individual note, a lot of composers will use it for a spooky setting or a mystical setting, something that sounds sort of questioning. The whole tone scale that I'm going to be using in this riff is actually the D flat whole tone scale, which I have written up here. The interesting thing to point out here is that there are only two whole tone scales. Because if we were to start from, say, C, D, E, F sharp, or any of those notes from that whole tone scale, we would wind up with the same six notes. Same thing if we start from D flat, E flat, F, G, A, or B. We're going to wind up with the same set of six notes. Moving on to the actual riff, if we look at it written up here, the first thing I'm sure you're probably noticing is that there are two red notes at the very beginning and at the very end. I'm using this to show that those two are notes that are not in the D flat whole tone scale that we are primarily using, but we're going to talk more about that in a little bit. Now I think it's easiest to divide this riff into three different sections. The first section is very simple and very short. It's just two notes. C and D flat. And I'm playing those with my first and second finger on the A string on the third and fourth frets. C, D flat. And I'm hammering on the D flat. C, D flat. The second section has a little bit more meat to it. I like to call it the Bach section because it's a concept that I took from his writing. So in Bach's Violin Concerto in A minor, what he does is he plays the same two or three notes on the bottom, here A, G sharp, A, and then moves up the scale in the top. So what he plays is this. So here I'm doing essentially the same thing. I'm playing F and G as my bottom notes, which I'm playing on the D string, the third and the fifth frets. And then I'm moving up the scale on the G string, starting on B, the fourth fret. So I'm playing F, G, B, F, G, D flat, F, G one more time, and then jumping up to F. So again, that's F, G, B, F, G, D flat, F, G, F. Let's hear how the first two sections sound together. The third section overlaps with the second section. That is, the third section starts on the F that the second section ends on. So we start up here on the F, and this I kind of like to think of as a finger twister. It's just a shape that we don't commonly play. So F to E flat with my pinky to my second finger, 
then B to A on the D string with my third and my first. For our final two notes, I'm just jumping over to D flat on the G string with my first finger and then just thwacking an open D. So all together that sounds like this. Let's hear the whole thing together. Now the last thing I'd like to mention before closing this out is, again, the C and D natural that we have that aren't in the whole tone scale. Now the reason I use these is because, as I stated before, the whole tone scale doesn't really have a tonic note. It's kind of floaty. So using the C, which is a half step below D flat, and the D, which is a half step above it, I'm hoping to tonicize the D flat to make it seem as if it's in a scale. Well, that's about it. If you're interested in learning more about the whole tone scale, I'd recommend listening to how other composers have used it. There are a lot of great examples in metal music and other aggressive styles of music, but also in classical music, like in the works of Claude Debussy, French Impressionist composer. Well, thanks for watching, guys. You can now find me on Instagram and Twitter at MusicOnTheDLO. You can also find me on Curious.com for an entire beginner bass guitar course. I'll see you next time, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.